Hi, Jay Harwood's been a special edition of Amazing Conversations with Matt Harvey. Matt, I've been here a long time, as you know, 40 plus years. In the 80s, there was excitement when Dwight Gooden pitched this case. Jacob DeGrom later in the 20s um, was exciting. But for like a four or five year period from maybe 2011 to 2017, Harvey Day was special, really special. What did that mean to you during a time when uh, uh, newspapers, TV, cameras, they couldn't get it, with Matt Harvey was all over the place? It was pretty wild. I mean, it's, uh, you know, something when, you, when you're growing up, you don't really think about. You yeah. don't think that that's, uh, obviously the dream was to be a Major League Baseball player, right. but you don't think of uh, the outside, the, the, the different parts of what, you know, what that brings. And, you know, I always wanted to play in New York. Um, I didn't expect all of the, the hype and the, the tabloids and all of that, but, um, you know, the time that I spent here was, you know, clearly something I'll never forget. Well, one particular Harvey Day I want to talk about, it didn't work out as we wanted, but no fault of yours. November 1st, 2015. Ben Zob fifth game of the World Series, bottom of the eighth inning, top of the eighth inning. Ben Zobris flies out to center field. Uh, Kansas City's one, two, three, they're out. Mets are winning two nothing. You walk into the dugout, you meet Terry Collins and and Dan Worthen. Tell me what transpired then. Well, when you're an intense athlete, I think in any in any sport, uh, you know, I had a conversation with Henrik Lundqvist with about this uh you know, a couple of weeks ago, and you know, you really get so locked in, and and you don't. I had no idea, honestly. I, when I came out and, and I was sitting in the dugout, I, I hadn't looked at the scoreboard once. I knew I knew we were winning. I didn't know, um, I didn't know what inning it was, you know. And and Dan Worthen came up to me and said, "Hey, hey, you know, we're we're taking you out. Terry's decided to take you out." I said, "You got to be kidding me!" I was like, "Dan, it's the seventh inning," and he goes, "No." He goes, hey, you just finished the eighth. And then, you know, and then I look up at the board and I see a bunch of zeros and, and uh, kind of realize what was going on. And I think that, you know, the intensity, the, you know, the, the wanting to win, the, the um, you know, that whole year was just, you know, electric. And, and being in that situation, being in that, being in the moment, um, you know, I just wanted to win. I wanted to go back so, out there. So uh, in that game, I think he scattered four hits through eight innings, uh, you know, and they hadn't gotten any runs. And, and you know, and to, to Terry and, and Dan's credit, they never went back on the decision. They felt you deserved the chance to win or lose the game. It didn't work out, you know, a walk double, we lose the 12 innings. But, I mean, with all the stuff you went through to get to that point, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to feel you deserve the opportunity to go back out there. Well, I think it's... It's one of those you can look at different situations. Right. You can look at if I just went back in the dugout and no one said a word to me if we would have won or if what would right. happen. I mean, it's it's uh, there's a lot of different things you can think about in that in that situation. But you know, I wanted to win. I was I was locked in. I felt like uh, you know I, I could finish the game. Obviously, in that situation. Um, you know, when you do look up and you see you're going into the ninth, there's a little bit of extra pressure, there's a little bit of extra um, adrenaline, and, and maybe that is what kicked in and, and uh, you know, threw me off my focus a little bit. But, uh, you know, unfortunately... I can remember that. sitting in the press box. I can never, ever remember the stadium being that loud. It just literally rocked. Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's... There were a lot of, a lot of moments that I remember yeah. this place being super loud and... and uh, I mean, just so grateful you, for You that. had a great postseason. You beat the Dodgers in the division, and, you know, uh, 72 thirds, nine strikeouts. You beat the Cubs in the championship first play. But what do you remember of those two games? Honestly, that, I remember, uh, I think I, most of, most of the, that series was just kind of a blur. Like, we were just playing so well. I remember Daniel Murphy going off, hitting home right, runs home left run and left. Home, home run after home run after home run. And I remember sitting in the dugout at, in game four in Wrigley and, uh, and being so nervous. <laughs> like I wasn't even, I wasn't pitching, I didn't pitch that game. But I remember pacing and someone, someone telling me in the dugout, they said, I said, can you sit down? Yeah. <laughs> Either stand on, the, stand on the railing or sit down. And um, you know, for some reason I look back on that and just being so excited that we were you know, about to go to the World Series and, and 
you know, we were we were that good. We were uh, we were a really good team. And you pitched the first game. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Cespedes had some trouble with the first ball hitting the game, uh, and we didn't we lose the next three innings. But now let me take it back to the beginning. A local guy from Connecticut. Was there extra pressure being a draft pipe by the Mets? I know you were a Yankee fan, like a big growing up. Was there any extra pressure being drafted by a New York team back then? Um, no, I, I mean, I was excited. I was obviously super excited. I mean, I, this was the only place I wanted to play. And, uh, you know, still to the end, it was really the only place I wanted to play. And, and um, I didn't know what was going to come with that. I didn't realize uh, uh, how intense it would be. But, you know, like I said, this was, this was it. I, I wish I finished my career here. I wish I was better. I wish I had done a lot of things. Uh, that I didn't do, and, and um, you know, from the start to finish, I, I always wanted to finish, and I wanted to play. I wanted to start here, and I wanted to finish here. So, in mid-year in 2012, Mitch had some injuries on the staff. Uh, Pelfrey got hurt. Santana got hurt. I, I'm, I'm, you weren't supposed to really be called up that year. Is that correct? Or, or some I, think it was, about it? I think there was maybe some talks about a September call up right. or, or whatnot. I know I was going on some innings. You know, some innings limits. I reached my innings limits a year before, and and uh, you know was was going deep into a lot of games up in Buffalo. So I think that was, you know, and then when I came up here, obviously I got shut down a couple weeks early in, in, in September. September. So, but July 26 in Arizona, five yeah. and two thirds, 11 strikeouts, two hits, two RBIs. Mm -hmm. Not a bad beginning. No, no, it was like a little league game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I. I Loved the strikeouts, and I think the hits were, uh, I think my dad was more excited about the hits than anything, so. I think he was the first player since 1900 to get two hits, strike out more than 10 batters in the, in the, in the deb oh, debut, wow. you, you, you know. It's nice. Let me, Look so, at you with all your facts. I, I'm a, I'm, like I said, I've been here for 45 <laughs> years, I, I know something. 2013 um, was a great year, for, you know. You, you, how big of a thrill was it for you starting the All-Star game? at City Field. Uh, I was, uh, I mean, words can't describe how amazing that was. It's, you know, it's one of those where I, I hadn't really gone back and obviously, you know, on Instagram, you see some clips here and there, but I actually hadn't gone back and really watched that game from the beginning of coverage to, to you know, when I was done. Um, but wearing those orange spikes and running out there and uh, warming up and getting my name called. I literally felt like I was warming up at 15, 20 feet in the air. Um, and two in each three, three Ks, one hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, pretty surreal moment. It was uh, amazing to have my family there. I had a bunch of friends here. Uh, obviously, all of New York was here and watching. And, um, you know, it was it was definitely one of those moments that I look back on and yeah, speaking of how when Harvey Day met, I, I forget which late night. One of my favorite things regarding you was who interviewed you. You would do some interviews on the street. Yeah. Who was it with Letterman? It was Le Jimmy Fallon. With Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And you were doing the interviews and, yeah. and, and were you at that time was it before? It must have been before the. All it was right before the All Star game. game. Yeah. So it was. And you were asking, what do you think of Matt Harvey? Yeah. Was, you know yeah. that and and who do you think should start the All Star game, game and this and that and it was it was uh, it was pretty. I have people all over New York, uh, you know, especially in the business world now, you know, a lot of people remember that that skit and, and think it's pretty funny. I mean, it was pretty funny. You know, we took about Harvey Day, the importance of that. There was a stretch in, um, in the beginning of that year, in April, you had took a no-hitter into the seventh inning three separate times, April 13th against the Twins, May 7th against the White Sox, June uh, 8th, against the, the Braves. What I remember the most, the White Sox game, one hit, and infield, we pitched infield, nine innings, and we won hit. if they took care. You had a lot of those games. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, that was uh, a pretty good stretch. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize th about those numbers, but they were you right. know, I remember I remember that uh, that play, Tejada, I think it was Tejada, he went you know, in the hole yeah. and threw it, and I don't know if, if we had the review yeah. back then, it might have been an out, but you know, it was one of those games where you know, both both pitchers were just dealing and, and uh, you know, unfortunately a couple of those I, I was dealing with, so. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you, so you, you, the, the Sports Illustrated cover came right about that time, and there's a lot of discussion, and I always felt, maybe because I'm an old 
fart, for lack of a better word. <laughs> Did you feel the cause of the cover an extra lot of pressure? I mean, I said you wanted to do it, it was okay, but Back in my old PR mind, I, did you feel it was it was too much, too soon, or not really? No, I think it was like like the all like the World Series. I think it's one of those things where if you went back and changed things, yeah. would they be different? We we don't know. I, I don't like to go back and um, you know look at certain moments and wish things. I did things differently. Yeah, or, no, you know, I will do but, that. We will do that. Um, yeah. But I don't think so. I think it was. Uh, you know, it was it was fun. It was something that I enjoyed doing at the time, and um, you know, I, I think it I think it got a little blown out of proportion when everyone on the team had their own you know nickname or whatnot. But see, I see that's where I agree. It got to the point where it was, it was a little bit too much, and we helped perpetrate that yeah. when, when the Mets did. Yeah, you know, that's it was what, all right. It was what, it was what, fun. You know, the fans enjoyed it and, yeah. and whatnot. But you know, I think once it was Thor and. Captain America and Dark Knight and all this, it was, uh, it was a little much. So in the, in the end of two, one piece of bad news, you know, the, the first of the three injuries, the, the end of August, the Tommy John, mm -hmm. how difficult was that to you to accept, you know, that you... Yeah, I had, I had a conversation about this the other night and that was, you know, going from being so locked in all year to you know, noticing something was wrong with, with my elbow. And then I, I think that was, you know, I was, I wouldn't say the start of it, but it, but not that many people were having Tommy John in 2012, you were, 2013. Were you really, yeah. You know, so it was, it was kind of a scary moment. You're frightened with that? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think, you know, all the, all the surgeries I had were, um, you know, ultimately you worry about recovery, you worry about, you know, more injuries after one, you know, like, um, but that one was, you know, specifically crazy, you know, scary because it was, it was uh, early, I guess, early in the Tommy John craze where yeah, it, was it wasn't happening. You might never pitch again. Or what's yeah, it? for sure. And then you, you come back and you, um, again, my memory, you come back, you were out of 2014, 15, your first game against Washington, great game, 9K, six innings. Was that a big relief to you? I mean, for sure. Yeah, I think that whole... I mean, that whole spring training here. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that whole, you know, I think I knew that spring training, I guess towards the end of 2014, I started throwing pretty hard again. And, um, you know, I think I was doing some live BPs like towards the end because it was, it was, I was approaching, you know, a full year of, of rehab and, uh, you know, was able to take the, the off season off normally. Um, train the way I would if I had pitched a, a season and, and the year before and then uh, be ready for spring training. And we kind of took off right away at, in the spring training and I knew, you know, things were back to normal and, and um, was ready for the season. So at the end of the, the 15th season, uh, could you come over to Tommy Jay, John, speculation, how many innings you get a pitch? Got to be back and forth in the papers. You wound up pitching 190 innings in the regular season and on another 20 in the postseason, over 200 innings, probably more than anybody, I don't have to say it, pitcher Tommy John. Mm -hmm. how, big, how big of a kick was it for you to pitch the clinching division game in Cincinnati, you know, mm -hmm. go into the seventh inning and yeah, awesome. give us the, 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 the pennant? That was, uh, yeah, that was, I mean, that was pretty surreal as well. Um, you know, going through that tough, back and forth, like you said, and, and um, you know, I, I, you worry about your health, you worry about your career. I wasn't, I didn't have a long-term contract. I wasn't making right. a ton of money. So you, you worry about those types of things when you're in that situation. And, um, you know, f for future family, for family that I have already, you know, f for being able to support them. And, um, you know, those thoughts come into your head when you're kind of risking your, your career or your health. Um, but to be out there with my teammates in that type of situation was something I'd never take for, you know, take back for anything. And then, and then pretty surreal to have the, uh, to take the ball on a, on a day like that where we're in Cincinnati and we clinched the, the playoff berth and that was, it was special. Do you feel you had something improved? I mean, it was all the BS in the papers. I, my, I pitched in the post and he went long in, you know, seven innings, nine innings, um, 
you know, the country name seven. Do you feel in your mind you wanted to prove something to people or to anybody in particular? I just wanted to win. Yeah. Um, you know, I always said this, and you heard them a thousand times or a couple hundred, whatever it was. But you know, my job I felt like was to go as deep as I could in every game and put up zeros as long as I could. And you know, that was that's changed now. Yeah. Well, sorry. Five and done. No. No. Yeah. Well, I can't even. I don't know if I could even throw five innings anymore. No, I mean, I mean but now the whole, you know. Yeah. Like, no, it would be nice to throw six six innings every game and, you know, hand it off. But um, So, and unfortunately, you weren't done with the injuries. In, in, in 16, the thoracic outlet syndrome and then the, the stress fracture. Mm -hmm. How Did you ever look back, Matt, and say, you know, I mean, looking back, three major injuries, even after the last one, you came back and got off to a good start in 18, if mm -hmm. I remember. I mean, was it tough coming back from one of those injuries? The thoracic outlet was just a really um, unique, tough injury, tough surgery. And, and um, I could just tell when I got done with that one that things just weren't going to be the same. And, and it, was, it was one of those where the more work I put in, the more training I tried to do, the, it was almost like the worse I was right. getting. And uh, as an athlete that's, and as a competitor, that, that, that was the fr extremely frustrating part is, you know, that whole time working towards a goal of getting back like I did with Tommy John, it was just, I was working harder and it was It's a lot to come back, back from. It was a lot, yeah. Okay. So you get traded to the Reds in May of that year, but one of the, I, I, one of the things I know you made major almost teary eyed, you come back and pitch with the Orioles in 21. Mm. Uh, in a nice way, didn't have much luck against the no, rest of the pitch against No, I didn't, no. You have a lot of runs, but you got a standing ovation walking yeah. up the mound. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, I wouldn't say that that contributed to me getting shellacked all over the, the field, but, but it, you know, pitching when you're that emotional yeah. and, and uh, I mean, you know, walking up the mound, it was nice to, yeah. after all the ups and downs, and yeah. they, the fans appreciated yeah, what was, you gave and, you know. It was and, incredible. You know, you know what you, Self, you know, I always loved it when you pitch for for the Met that started because your mother always bought me cookies. <laughs> your mother always found I'm her. Sure, way, yeah. Your mother always found her way to the press box. She and, did, and dropped off. And yeah, you know, now I'm on a diet, Matt. Could you tell? I can't yeah. eat the cookies anymore. But she made great homemade chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, do you remember the one joke I played? I know you probably don't. In my younger days, I was kind of crazy with my Twitter account. I tweeted something one day. Uh, Matt Harvey is leaving practice one day to go see a Ranger game. Do you remember that no. at all? I, I, luckily, I, that was Twitter was one thing that I actually gave to, to the marketing people. Yeah, that but I, I tweeted. Agency. You you got to believe the response we got. How could he leave the Mets? Go watch a Ranger game. Yeah. I tweeted some unbelievably <laughs> awful stuff, and it, and, it, and it, even Boomer signs on the air. How could he leave the Mets? I'm a big Ranger fan. He can't, can't leave the Mets. Yeah. And go, and, Go to game. Matt, tell the people what you're doing now, real estate business. Yes, yeah, so I work for a commercial real estate company called Newmark. Um, you know, especially big in New York City, but but also we're pretty much worldwide. Um, you know, really enjoying it. It's it's uh, it's a tough learning process when you go from learning scouting reports and uh, and training programs and all that to uh, to finance. But uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've got a great group of guys that I work with. And, um, you know, that gives me some time to live in New York City and also be able to come out to a lot of Mets games. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to have a new career and, and uh, move forward with that. You see you have office in London, I you we, we had dinner with our, with our uh, London crew last night, so I don't know how much I'll actually be going over there, but, you know, it's nice. Uh, it was nice to meet them and, and uh, you know, know that we're I guess you're still a company. big recognition from your clients of who you are. I mean, that's you know, around in the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I go to a lot of these conferences throughout throughout the country, yeah. and uh, you know, there are a lot of a lot of double takes, and you know, people wondering if I'm the same Matt Harvey as the one who played yeah. played for the Mets. That, so you're not Steve Harvey, no, right? no, the TV show. Yeah, no. I, I, so you pitched in um, the WBC a couple of years ago. Pretty good success. One point yeah. in two nine a year, right? How was it play for Mike Piazza? It was awesome. It was awesome. We, uh, I'm actually still involved uh, pretty heavily with him and uh, and the whole organization. And I've gone over to, you know, a couple a uh, couple of their summer tournaments this past year. And 
going to continue with them and, and hopefully help out uh, as much as I can for the next WBC. Obviously not pitching, but um, maybe as a mentor or or some sort of coach. I and mean, Mike is really heavily involved in, the, in is, this yeah. stuff, and he's you know he works a lot. You're, you're going to be just 35 in April in March. In right? March, yeah. It, any thoughts of coming? I know you. you you, I think I answered before. You hurt your knee after Italy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't want to pitch under those circumstances. Any back in your mind thoughts of one day getting back out there again? Or? Yeah, I mean, if you guys do an old leaguers game, I'll, I'll come out and sling well, an inning or two. No, but no, 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 <laughs> no thoughts. No, no thoughts about no, I, it. I physically can't. So it's yeah. it's. You, you you paid your, your. I paid I paid my dues good. one way or the other. So, you know, looking back on the experience is more. Way more pluses and minuses, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like we talked about the All Star Game, the World Series, uh, the Jimmy Fallon skit. I mean, some of those, some of the road trips that we had, you know, as a team, the flights, um, the dinners, um, the events, you know, that all that stuff, stuff you can't can't forget. So, and you pitch in really uh, up until fifteen. Mets weren't a great team then, and the records weren't great, and. I mean, you just captivated the the whole city for a good four or five years. Those are good memories to have. Man, I appreciate your time yeah. and always welcome back. Yeah, thank you, Jay. All it was right, awesome. Man. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. See you, bud.